The recovery of the world economy in the 1970s made Japan's industry develop extremely rapidly. While Japan's economy was leaping, the spiritual needs of the young readers had increased sharply as well. Readers began to crave romanticized manga that would satisfy them, and 1974 was a year full of science fiction and literature in order to cater to the consumers. In the past, Getter Robo appeared with the concept of merging robots, and later, the first space opera series in Japan, Space Battleship Yamato, appeared, both of which provided endless inspiration for a large number of science fiction works in the future. The biggest surprise of that year was Haiti, Girl of the Alps by Miyazaki Hayao, and Takahata Isao. At this time, it had been more than 10 years since the official establishment of Studio Ghibli, but you could still see Miyazaki Hayao's praise for nature and the love for rural life from this anime. As the two people who have contributed the most to Japanese anime, Miyazaki Hayao actually didn't like Tezuka Osamu very much, but also can't be said to hate him either. Tezuka Osamu's works gave Miyazaki Hayao some influence when he was a child. In his early creative career, Miyazaki Hayao had been living in the shadows of Tezuka Osamu. Because the works of these two have some similarities in the central idea, both of them show their love for nature, their hatred of war, and both of them will focus on portraying the charm of female characters in their works. Because of these, Miyazaki Hayao's works in the early days had been pointed out as imitations of Tezuka Osamu's, which made him feel very angry just because he was born later and was stamped with the name of plagiarism. In order to create a new path, Miyazaki burned all of his previous works and started to study again. As Miyazaki grew up, he began to realize that Tezuka Osamu's works often featured a cheap tragedy. To put it bluntly, a genius who advocated the idea of high-quality anime is opposed to the idea of a talented genius who developed high-quantity but low-quality anime. I believe, however, that Miyazaki also knew that this was the only way for Japanese anime. What he hated was not Tezuka Osamu, but those creators who didn't innovate and had been walking the path that Tezuka Osamu had walked. Personally, what I think Miyazaki really likes are those anime kind of like Made in Abyss. I kind of went off topic there, so now let's return to the history of Japanese anime and manga. If the 1960s belonged to the era of male movement-oriented works, created by works such as Star of the Giants and Ashita no Jo, then the 1970s was the era of manga filled with female-oriented movement, such as Attack No. 1 and Aim for the Ace being representatives of that era. In other areas, shoujo manga also began to move closer to shonen manga, and some passionate plots began to appear. Between the 1970s and 1980s, TV recording was invented, and for Japanese TV anime fans, they no longer needed to be afraid of missing the broadcast timing, and the reach of anime had been greatly boosted by the advancement of this technology. If you don't consider the 1917 and 1926 book adaptations of Battle of the Monkey and the Crab, as well as Sayuki Son Goku Monogatari, then Japan's first anime film adaptation of a light novel was 1974's Kikansha Yaimon, D51 no Daivoken. Then, with the appearance of the Galaxy Express 999 manga in 1977, it symbolized that Japanese manga had matured, and the maturation period from 1961 to 1977 had ended, and it was ready to enter a new phase, which is also known as the Golden Age of Japanese anime and manga. In 1978, Japan created Animage, Japan's first anime magazine, in response to the taste of those anime otakus, which meant those passionate fans of anime. Doraemon began to be animated in 1979, Although it was animated once before in 1973, it was the 1979 version, the Oyama edition, that really made Doraemon known to the world. In addition to Doraemon, another famous IP was born in this year, that is, the anime Mobile Suit Gundam, which would have the greatest anime-related impact on the Japanese economy in the future. Before Gundam, many robot anime were criticized as tasteless 30-minute toy commercials. Basically, the villain appears, and then the righteous hero controls a badass robot to defeat the opponent. Many directors had begun to try and reshape the plot setting of the story, so that the robot can better integrate into the story. Directed by Tomino Yoshiyuki, 1979's Mobile Suit Gundam and 1980's Space Runaway Ideon had more mature content, more philosophical thinking, and succeeded in bringing the super robot mecha genre of Japanese anime into the real robot genre. 1981's Fang of the Sun Dugram began to incorporate political elements into Japanese anime and succeeded in attracting a larger audience of older viewers. Super Dimension Fortress Macross, which aired in 1982, began to add elements to the robot genre, including idols, love triangles, and other elements that once again had a huge impact on future Japanese anime. For example, before it appeared, the openings of Japanese anime were basically sung by male or child voice actors. After the introduction of the concept of idols, Japanese idols and anime have often started to cooperate, and now many of the openings and endings we hear are sung by Japanese idols. 
This also expanded the commercialization of anime. Not only were they able to sell robot toys, but they also made profits through original soundtracks. At the same time, because of the success of Super Dimension Fortress Macross, it made people aware of the potential capabilities of idol anime and love triangles. It can be said that it was the precursor of these types of idol and love triangle works in the future. In 1983, another robot anime, Aura Battler Dunbine, aired. This anime is also known as Japan's first isekai anime. Regarding these firsts, please don't go too deep into it. If you really want to know what the first was, then I can only say that the first isekai in Japan is Urashima Taro, or the British isekai work, Alice in Wonderland. It's a pity that robot anime is obviously the ancestor of many anime, but after entering the 21st century, the output of robot anime had been completely crushed by those idol and isekai anime. And as the most popular anime categories in the 21st century, their popularity is derived from moe culture. And one of the pioneers of moe anime is from the manga Urusei Yatsura, created by Takahashi Rumiko in 1978. It was adapted into an anime in 1981. Although moe culture appeared after Sailor Moon was broadcast in the 1990s, its prototype can be seen in Urusei Yatsura. At the same time, because of the personality of the male protagonist, there is also the shadow of the harem anime that will appear more than 10 years later within this anime. By the way, Urusei Yatsura will be remade in 2022. If you're interested, you can go and check it out. With the broadcast of Lalabelle the Magical Girl in 1980, the name Magical Girl appeared for the first time, and the category of anime also added another category, that of the Magical Girl genre. Then, in 1982, Magical Princess Minky Momo, it was determined that the Magical Girl genre must have a mascot. This plot setting is not only convenient for selling toys, but also made it possible to express a delicate emotion unique to girls of that age through the interaction between the girl and the mascot, which is very suitable for the viewer's appetite. Until some loan sharks and a pervert showed up. Magical Princess Minky Momo is also considered to be one of the origins of today's lolly culture. In fact, it was also the first Magical Girl anime with a dark plot, 30 years before Modoka. In anime episode 46, the protagonist Momo was hit by a car without any warning and will later be reincarnated. Hit by a truck, getting reincarnated, it can also be considered as a pioneer work of current isekai anime. It is because of the appearance of this plot that some of the future works will tell a story for children, but only those that are 18 and up could understand the cruelness behind the work. Also, as one of the origins of lolly culture, and also the pioneer of the magical girl type anime, there is Creamy Mommy the Magic Angel, which created the element of love in anime for children. At the time, romantic love was taboo for children, so this was a very bold innovation. Back in 1981, this time, it was the home court of manga. The appearance of Captain Tsubasa had inspired many sports manga in the future, and its success had also allowed many manga artists to combine superpowers and sports, two seemingly unrelated elements. Although the original intention of the author to draw this manga was to continue the work created by the core of the sports movements in the 1970s, somehow a byproduct genre by the name of BL or Boys Love appeared, and it became the ancestor of Yaoi manga. Think of the kickers as Seme and the goalkeepers as Uke. I sure admire the imagination of the fans of that era. The first Japanese manga with Yaoi elements should be Mizuno Hideko's shoujo manga Fire, serialized in 1969. The first Yuri manga was Shiroi Heia no Futari, serialized by Yamagishi Ryoko in 1971. And the first official Yaoi manga was Kaze Tuki no Uta, serialized by Takemiya Keiko in 1976. And the first Yaoi manga to be popular was Saint Seiya. How could this happen? I don't want to get too deep into the roots of these two categories. I'd better go back to 1982. This year, the manga world was rocked by the appearance of a man, and he was Otomo Katsuhiro. His manga Akira improved almost all of the reader's tastes for manga at that time through the extremely refined style of artwork, and even Tezuka Osamu praised him for taking the cinematic manga that he had failed to complete to the extreme. As someone who had lived through the student movements and left-wing movements, Otomo Katsuhiro added steampunk and a destructive aesthetic to his work. After Akira was adapted into an anime in 1988, it had a great impact on Japan overseas, breaking the stereotype in other countries that anime was for children, and paving the way for the cultural output of anime from Japan to the world in the future. The biggest feature of his works is the high cost. The anime Akira's production budget at that time was 700 million yen in total, which was the most expensive anime film of that year. 
Then in 2004, his second major work, Steam Boy, took 9 years and a production budget of 2.4 billion yen and once again won one of the longest produced and most expensive anime awards in Japanese history. At the time, when science fiction works were so popular, other types of works also wanted to take a share, and the representative of them was Fist of the North Star, which started serialization in 1983. It not only appeared in front of readers as the originator of the fighting science fiction manga, but also as one of the manga that best reflected the Shonen Jump style and unique art style. In the same year, Goho 13's film The Professional was officially released, which was the first time in the history of Japanese anime to use CGI technology. From the current point of view, this CGI was very simple, but it was a bold innovation at the time. Aside from the 3D, its 2D graphics were considered top-notch at the time, and even now. Still, in 1983, Dalos, directed by Oshi Mamoru, was the birth year of the first OVA, original video animation, in the history of Japanese anime. The OVA of that year was not an addition of other media like those of the present, but the OVA of that year created a new era. At that time, the quality of an OVA was generally higher than that of a TV anime, which led to the sales of videotapes. And because it was not broadcast on TV, the restrictions on OVAs were much less, and the content would be richer, and there would be more 18 and up artwork. The dominant direction of anime content in this era was no longer completely in the hands of the producers, but began to shift towards the people who purchased it. It can be said that beginning from that period, the fans' preferences determined the content of the anime. This phenomenon provided the perfect breeding ground for future harem anime. The emergence of so many interesting manga and anime was only the beginning of the golden age of Japanese anime. This golden age started by the magical girl genre versus the giant robot genre will continue and ultimately reach the peak of Japanese anime.